Hello everyone, and this is my review for Monday Night Raw on November 26, 2012. Um, all in all, uh, Oh no, they did definitely do some uh, decent, uh, you know, build up going into the pay into the TLC pay per view. Uh, of course, uh, next month uh, you also had some really good matches on Raw this week: uh, the Rey Mysterio Daniel Bryan match, the uh, John Cena Dolph Ziggler match, the even the Antonio Cesaro and Sheamus match was there was those were some really good matches in there in general. I'll get into a little bit. Uh, other aspects of them a little bit later on. Uh, also on good matches, uh, the Punk K match in, in general was also extremely good as well. Um, for, uh, first of all, we'll start off on the uh, Dolph Ziggler and uh, John Cena area. Uh, I felt like this week the uh, promo was a little bit weaker, mostly because they just kind of went with more uh, trivial or uh, in my mind maybe almost a little bit more juvenile areas in their promo where on the past weeks their promos have been extremely well done. This week uh, I didn't really get that that feeling between the two of them especially after you know uh, Cena coming out and then Vicky confronting him, AJ confronting her and then eventually Dolph, in, Dolph interjecting himself at the end there. It just felt like it came off a little bit more weak this week than it did in other weeks. Um, but all in all, it did lead to a match, which I figured they would have actually saved for pay-per-view in this case, uh, considering how the feud was going. But no, they decided to do it this week. And it was an extremely good match. Fun match to watch. Um, uh, just a fun match to watch in general. Uh, the aspect on the uh, Daniel Bryan Rey Mysterio match, uh, obviously, uh, Kane won the Raw Active Poll to face CM Punk that night, and uh, it left Ray or it left uh, Daniel Bryan to go up against Ray Mysterio. Once again, the two of them uh, they put on an extremely fun match. Uh, great back and forth action there. Hopefully, this will lead, uh, continue leading into the uh, into maybe a tag team feud with. Kane and Daniel Bryan versus Sin Cara and Rey Mysterio for the tag titles at some point in time. But all in all, extremely good match there. Um, you, uh, you did have a uh, quick match with Tamina as well. Obviously, they're trying to build her up, trying to go into the uh, uh, into a potential match or a feud with AJ I, because obviously they're not going to have Vicky and AJ going at it. So Tamina is going to t going to uh, take the place of Vicky there in the in ring action portion. So you had a little bit of build up for uh, Tamina this week with the whole uh, with her match with Alicia Fox. The um, and, uh, 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 sorry, I'm lo I'm losing a little bit of track of mine there. Uh, obviously. Uh, uh, the uh, Sheamus and Antonio Cesaro match. Once again, fun match. I didn't, I didn't really uh, know why they put this match together. It didn't seem like it was, a, it really would have fit well in the way that they've been doing things with Sheamus. But uh, in this, in the match, Antonio Cesaro, uh, you know, he really got to show off uh, what more he can do versus uh, an opponent, opponent like Sheamus. He got to show off his strength. He got to show off his other abilities inside the ring. I like the fact that they, um, instead of having him just, you know, cowering out at the end to get himself counted out, he kind of got himself, he got, he kind of got knocked out by the bro kick and then got sent out of the ring, which, uh, you know, Sheamus would have typically tried to get him back in the ring, but Big Show distracted him uh, from doing so. And Big Show, of course, you know, Big Show and Sheamus had a back and forth after the count out, and uh, Big Show basically uh, showed what he could do, with, somewhat showed what he could do with the chair. He showed what he could do destroying the chair. And obviously it, it, it signifies this is what he can do with a chair, uh, to a chair. Uh, what can he do when he's actually using the chair as a weapon? So that, that was a nice little uh, build into the world title match as well to go along with the uh, really good match between Sheamus and Antonio Cesaro. Um, throughout the whole night though, uh, the main focus was around Again, CM Punk and Ryback and the new, and the new group going in there, and now they're calling themselves the Shield. Roll, uh, Rollins, Ambrose, and Reigns, uh, they're calling themselves the Shields, they're the, uh, and they call themselves the Protectors of Injustice. 
but it, you know, and from the way that it looks like, they are just you know protecting CM Punk at this point in time. And then again, that's all they've had. That's all they've actually done is uh, interfere with uh, CM Punk's uh, not, uh, CM Punk's matches or in situations where he's been very uh, uh, in a very dicey situation. Uh, obviously, after after the match with Kane or. Uh, I could get, I'll get into that a little bit later on, but you know, the show did start out with uh, Ryback coming out there just and uh, having his match with Titus O'Neil. Okay, back and forth action, still a really quick match. Uh, Ryback, of course, takes it in a dominating fashion, uh, holds the show hostage, and he gets his uh, title shot again at uh, the TLC pay per view in a tables, ladders, and chairs match. And um, you also had the interview with uh, with the, the group, The Shield. And then uh, afterwards, uh, after the CM Punk and Kane match, uh, that The Shield uh, appeared there, and they started attacking Kane after the match. And then uh, th that brought out brought in Daniel Bryan, which eventually. You know, they overpowered Daniel Bryan, and then this eventually led to Ryback coming out there. He comes out, looks like he's, uh, you know, CM Punk looked like he was running uh, running off, and Ryback uh, jumped in there. He got the uh, quick advantage over the shield, taking them down really quickly. Punk came back in and attacked him, which it looked like he was going to, uh, and Ryback was actually going to get the advantage over him. But the, one of the members of the Shield recovered, took out Ryback, and they laid him out again for the third straight week. Obviously, this is where I, I do feel like they're going in a direction where, you know, they're, I don't feel like they're going to put the WWE title on Ryback at the pay-per-view. That's why they're making it a tables, ladders, and chairs match in general. So you can't... Uh, so they don't have him get pinned or submit or anything in that in that uh, range, but they'll probably have the shield more than likely interfere. At least that's what I'm thinking. And this will get uh, right back out of the title picture for the time being, and he can focus on them after the uh, tables, ladders, and chairs mat, um, match at the pay per view. And then uh, Punk can focus on, and then Punk will probably end up focusing on a uh, few with the Rock going into the Royal Rumble. Uh, that's my own personal opinions on what I've, I'm thinking will end up happening. We'll see where they actually go uh, in that, if they go in that direction or go in a completely different one in general. Uh, but overall, I felt like, uh, you know, you had some really good matches on the show and you had some uh, decent build-up going into the pay-per-view. And, you know, it came out to be a fairly entertaining Raw this week. And, and yeah, that's basically uh, my review of Monday Night Raw this week. I thank you guys for watching and I hope you enjoyed.